The last few nights, I've been having pretty intense dreams. Not really nightmares, I'm used to those, but vivid dreams that are just oppressive with anxiety. It's starting to get to the point that I can't really go to sleep. I have work in the morning and should be asleep right now, yet here I am after 2 a.m. physically and mentally fatigued, but completely wide awake. A quick note here as well that compared to many other stories you can find online, this event is probably going to seem pretty mild. I guess I'm trying to say not to get too high of expectations as far as paranormal stuff goes. Anyway, here we go. About five years ago, my wife and I moved from the city out to a house more in the country. The house is a coal miner house that can be commonly found in this area of Pennsylvania. They are big, yet somehow always feel cramped. Generally not the best insulated and old. So most of the time, they need a good bit of fixing up. We were happy enough though, because it meant moving away from the city. Plus the rent was cheap, and our landlords were friends of my wife's family. So all in all, a good move. Our landlords bought the place for their daughter after the previous owner, an elderly blind lady who went to their church, passed away. Not in the house though. Her health dropped and she moved into a hospice for about a month, before passing away quietly in her sleep. Our landlords bought it from her family for their daughter, but she had just gotten married and moved in with her husband and they didn't want it to sit empty for the winter. So we moved in and things were good. The house itself was essentially set up like a duplex split vertically, but there was a door upstairs that connected both sides. The other side from us was empty and hadn't been updated since the elderly lady lived there. The power and water were shut off on that side and since we had access to the whole place, we pretty much just used it for storage. I say all of this because from day one, my wife had bad vibes from the vacant side. I was okay with it. By this point in our relationship, I was well familiar with her sensitivity to these things. At this time, I was open to the existence of the unexplainable. I've known many people who have had paranormal events happen. I even once worked with a guy who claimed he saw a Bigfoot while hunting. I've had weird occurrences happen and a strange events when I was a kid, but nothing that I would concretely define as paranormal. Now, I am very paranoid by nature, but life experience has taught me that the worst thing that can go bump in the night is another person. My wife brought up this bad vibe from time to time. It seemed to ebb in and out. She had explained that it seemed centralized in the attic and was dark and predatory, but curious and seemingly wanting to be around. There were several times that I had looked the whole house over for her, just in case. Eventually, I completely locked the other side up in such a way that the only way to get to that side was to go in from the side we lived in and cross through the door that separated the two halves. The attic itself was just a little crawl space that had recently been updated with modern insulation. The only access was a small hatch on the vacant side ceiling. No stairs or ladder attached to it. So things went pretty well for the five years. Every now and then there would be a weird creak or a small bang, but it's an old house and also we had two dogs and a cat, so that's to be expected. Any time a specifically strange creak would happen, which would sound like someone walking around, I would go over and check. But nothing, no boogeyman, no weirdo living in a secret passage, just a few old echoey walls and some extra boxes filled with Christmas decorations. So the event in question happened last week. My wife and I finally have been able to get a house of our own. We actually moved in just this previous weekend. So naturally all last week, we were packing things up and moving our things out from the vacant side. So they'd be ready when we got the U-Haul. I've been working from home ever since the COVID pandemic started last year and was taking a lunch break. My office is upstairs and I'd walked downstairs and grabbed some lunch. My wife was at her work, as was one of our dogs. He's a service dog for her and mostly goes everywhere with her. So there I was sitting down eating and watching TV and out of nowhere, I heard a clear and distinct voice say, come closer. The voice came from directly overhead in the upstairs hallway. Not the hallway on the vacant side, the upstairs hallway on the side that we lived in. 
The voice was quiet. It sounded like someone trying to whisper loud enough that they could be heard on the same floor, but not by anyone else. I immediately stopped everything I was doing and listened closer. The voice spoke again. Come closer. It was the same forced whisper and I absolutely was not imagining it. This time I could tell it was distinctively feminine and that it was in a way that the voice was coming from the end of the hallway that leads to the door that bisects the house and was projected towards the other end where our stairs were. I could also tell that the voice seemed to be speaking to someone, but not me. I stood up and turned off the TV, kind of in a weird way of shock. Strangely enough, I was really taken off guard, not just that I was hearing this, but that it wasn't directed to me and my mind was racing on who it could be and who it could be talking to. It then hit me that our other dog, a little Jack Russell mix, wasn't with me, eyeing me up for scraps like he normally would be. Sure enough, I heard the voice a third time say, come closer, only it sounded like there was hints of amusement, like the person saying it was smiling. Immediately, and I mean immediately, I heard my dog bark. He was at the top of the stairs and it was a fast panicked bark. I grabbed the handgun I keep in a drawer in the room I was in and bolted towards the stairs. Anyway, I went moving into the kitchen and turned to face the stairs. Just as I did, I saw my Jack Russell scrambling past my feet, evidently running from something. I carefully climbed the stairs, moving slowly and listening as hard as I could. As I reached the top, I turned down the hallway and found nothing, nothing at all. For the next 20 minutes, I searched the whole upstairs, office, bathroom, closets, everything. There was no one and nothing out of place. Next, I went to the door that led to the vacant side. I always kept a five gallon bucket and a dolly propped against it. This was mainly to keep the animals from going to the vacant side. The door was old and swollen and didn't latch right and would pop open when it got hot or cold out. So while it is easy enough to move them out of the way, it would be difficult to move the items back against the door if you were going from our side to the vacant side. And yet, there was the dolly and bucket right where they were supposed to be, pressed against the door. I went over on that side anyway and check up and down. All the windows were locked, all the doors sealed, nothing out of place. The whole experience had me so frazzled and to be honest, a bit panicked. This truly was not just an auditory hallucination. I genuinely heard someone talking and not just me, but my dog heard it as well. I ended up texting my wife and she called me when she had a minute. I just explained what happened and that helped calm me down a bit. She of course reminded me of the feelings she had gotten and I had to agree with her. This happened on Thursday and we actually ended up moving on Friday, which was what we had previously planned on anyway. But the entire time that it was there, especially for the rest of my workday, I literally felt like someone was standing directly behind me, looking over my shoulder. You know the feeling I mean when someone is behind you or looking at you and you don't know it, but you can somehow feel it. So you look, but in this case, still just nothing. Anyway, we moved into our new place now. We still have some odds and ends to bring over. We were moving things individually on Monday and Tuesday, but there is now this incredible feeling of anxiety and being watched that we are waiting for this Saturday when we can both go together and finish cleaning everything out. I think once all of our things are out of the house and we have officially closed that chapter, I'll feel a lot better. But wow, I didn't realize that things like this could feel like this. I know it probably sounds silly, but I still can't shake how it made me feel. Whatever it was, if it actually even is anything, it's definitely still at the old house and seemingly content to stay there or unable to move away. I think what has shaken me the most though, was that it didn't and does not feel human. Like when you talk about a ghost or something like that, you are talking about a human spirit or an echo of human energy or something like that. But this didn't feel like anything I've ever experienced. Not human, not animal, nothing normal. 
Especially that day when I couldn't shake that something was right behind me. It was just this weight of anxiety. And as dumb as it sounds, like something that is both extremely hungry, but too curious with me to do anything about it. Yet, I don't know, I'm tired. I'm probably not making sense. Many years ago, me, female, then around nine, and my sister, then around six, went to our cabin in the Norwegian mountains with our dad and stepmom. There were three bedrooms in our cabin. Me and my sister always slept in the one in the middle. Pretty small room with a bunk bed. Me in the top bunk and my sister in the bottom bunk. There's a window there, but since our cabin is built on a kind of hill, there is some height between the window and the ground outside. This one time, I wake up in the middle of the night. The moonlight was really strong that night and it had it lit up our room. I remember immediately looking at the wall across from our bed. Like I knew something was there and it woke me up. On the wall, there were two shadows. Very clearly two people holding hands. Looked like two young boys, one a bit taller than the other. I looked for a while, trying to figure out what the hell this was. They just stood there completely still. I got scared and I went back to sleep. As I was in the top bunk, I felt a bit safer. Next day, at the breakfast table, I finally told everyone what I had seen last night. That's when my sister, who slept in the bottom bunk, told me she also woke up that night and saw the exact same thing. We still talk about it to this day. We remember all the same details. We have no idea what the hell that was. It couldn't have been from outside because of the window that was too high up. Also, who would it be? Everyone else was asleep in the room next to us. Hello, in 1979, I was just eight years old and moved home, lived there for 10 years with my parents and younger sister from a really rough inner city area with terraced housing and cobbled streets to a much more rural area of my country with fields and cows, etc. It was a semi-detached house with a sports field and farmland at the back of the house. One of the first things I can remember about the house is that at night, I used to hear heavy breathing right next to my ear when laying in bed. I never told anyone about it. I knew it wasn't my imagination because one night, my younger sister, she slept in a different room, was shouting out for my father, telling him she could hear heavy breathing right next to her ear. Sometimes I used to lay there at the night thinking I've not heard that heavy breathing for a while. Then almost as it was reading my thoughts, the heavy breathing would come back within seconds, right next to my ear. I got given a puppy and one evening she was barking up at the ceiling in the corner. It was strange behavior, as if she could hear something upstairs and everyone was downstairs. I think it was beings coming in and out of the portal. Another time, one evening, it might have been winter, we all heard a loud thud coming from upstairs and something heavy walking around the corner of the parents' bedroom. Everyone was downstairs, including the dog. At night, you could sometimes hear like a strange collective whispering noise. After a couple of years of living in the house, my relationship with my parents became mentally and physically abusive to the point where they were being violent against me. This was part of the demonic plan in my opinion. I think my family were being targeted by other people, probably Satanists. People had befriended my mother back then who I've later worked out were not good people. The people who lived in the house before us, I was told, were Mormons as well. The shed. There were strange symbols chalked in white on the shed door. There was a five pointed star and a ghostly spirit image with chalked red eyes that looked straight into my soul. One day I was looking around in the shed when I found these jam jars with white powder inside them. 
There must have been at least 15 or 20 of them hidden away with all the other clutter in the bottom right hand corner. The jars seemed to be sealed with something inside, maybe candle wax. I started to open one of the jars and at that point, I felt a strong creepy presence right behind me. So I got out of there and never touched those jars again. I've become aware from my research that those were spell jars. Demons on my landing? One time, I was dreaming flying around outside my house. At this point, I must have been around 14. It must have been about 5.30 or 6 a.m. in the morning and it was light outside. I'd had dreams like this before, especially when I was younger. I think they call it a psychic dream when you're fully conscious and aware of your surroundings. Anyway, I started to fly into my house and up the staircase until I was halfway up the stairs and I noticed strange looking beings hovering on the landing next to the bedrooms. There were at least three of them for what I can remember and they were levitating a couple of inches off the carpet floating. They were about three foot tall and the closest thing I can say they looked like was the little blue doctors from the film Communion. They had their eyes closed and were making some kind of weird sound, a bit like an om sound but stranger as if they were meditating. I wanted to take on as much info as possible, but didn't want them to open their eyes and look straight at me. I managed to fly back into my body and woke up straight away in shock and jolting torso forward out of my bed. I didn't check the landing until about an hour and a half later. I just lay there. There was nothing on the landing when I checked. My family were fast asleep. Trapped in my bedroom in the middle of the night, I woke up one night, I must have been 15 or 16 years old, and was probably about 3 a.m. And there was, there was a strange, there was a strange red light in my bedroom. It lit up about one third of my room. I didn't know what to do. I was worried there might be something in the room with me, but I couldn't see anything. I was scared and at some point I do remember making a run for my bedroom door. I got to where my bedroom door handle should have been, but there was no door handle and no door, just a wall, no light switch from what I can remember either. So I went back to bed, I couldn't sleep, and I remember getting back up to look out my bedroom window, but there was a massive glare coming back in. I couldn't make anything out. In the end, I just threw the sheets over my head and it took ages, but I fell asleep in the end fairy ring at the back of our house. One autumn evening about 1987, I remember having a thought form, where is your dog? I used to worry a lot about my dog. I alone in the house again, so I started to look looking for my dog. I couldn't find her anywhere, so I thought she must be outside. At the back of our garden, there were mushrooms growing in the circle. I was outside halfway down the garden it was pitch black because it was just fields, no street lights. It was just backlit by the kitchen light from our house. I could just make out a tall shadow figures dancing in a crazy way inside the mushroom ring. I decided not to walk any further. I watched them for a short time, maybe a minute or so, and went back inside the house where I found my dog. I think shadow figures wanted to take me. In autumn 1995, when I was five years old, my parents moved us from suburban Dublin to a small town in a neighboring county. Nowadays, that area would almost be considered suburban, but back then, it was in the middle of nowhere, right before Ireland's economy started to really boom. They bought a house that was about two kilometers from the village in a field surrounded on all sides by farmland, with a little cow shed directly touching the edge of our land. It had a long driveway up to the house, three bedroom, 1900s dormer bungalow. As a suburban kid, I hated the place as soon as we moved there. My parents were in their late twenties, early thirties at the time, had bought, grown up in the city and wanted to experience country life. So it was an opportunity to do a renovation. When we moved in, the place was rancid. Nobody had lived in the house for decades. 
I remember the water running yellow from the taps and the kitchen being non-existent when we moved in. And the heating wasn't installed yet. On our first Saturday there, I remember we watched what I think was Goldeneye. It could have been a trailer for it that I remember. I was only five. Beside an electric heater with duvets around a tiny TV. It was bleak at first. As it moved into winter, my parents were renovating room by room and I experienced my first memorable snowstorm. Our electricity went out and I remember my mom trying to keep me chill while she lit candles. Over time, things got better and they renovated the upstairs room first. When you walked up the stairs, there was one big room we all put our beds into that connected to an attic space, which I remember helping my dad put rat traps and sticky bug tape into. Anyway, over time, they renovated all the rooms in the house and it turned out really nice. It was very 90s with loads of bright colors and a country kitchen, but my mother was really depressed there. This was a time before the internet took off and in Ireland at the time, once you left the cities, you only had three channels and they were all Irish, which in 1995 was not a good thing. She felt isolated and I remember a few times she let me take the day off school and stay home. I think because she was lonely. Anyway, in August 1996, they gave up and moved us back to the city. They bought a really nice brand new home right before house prices skyrocketed and I even got to rejoin the class I had spent a couple months with in 1995. In 2011, when I was 21, my dad and I went for a drive together and decided to drive back to that town. He started telling me stories about that house and suddenly, a bunch of experience I'd had suddenly made sense. Remember that big room upstairs? My whole life I've had this recurring dream where I'm lying on my bed, my parents are downstairs with family over and as I close my eyes, I can see shadows moving in front of me between the hanging light and the bed as if someone is walking back and forth in front of me. I've had that dream maybe 20 times. My dad told me that one of the major reasons they left was because they felt the place was haunted. My mom was already depressed being alone there while he commuted into the city every day, but that she also had experiences that made it very difficult for her to be alone by herself. Both of them had also experienced the shadows and the lights. He told me that once she was brushing her teeth in the downstairs beth bathroom, felt a cold sensation and then the back of her robe was pulled so hard she dropped a toothbrush. But the bit that really freaked her out was me talking to myself. My sister had been freaked out by this too. One night, and I remember this as clear as day, my parents had friends over. I was playing in my bedroom, now downstairs, and I had an 80s arcade machine in my room that, that my dad had gotten somewhere. You didn't need to put change in to make it work, but I remember very clearly that I was with a girl who wanted to know how it worked. Something happened and she convinced me to get some change and try to force it in. I went to my mom and lied and told her that I needed some money for the charity box school had given me. She gave it to me and the girl tried to slot it in. My mom came in and she was really mad at me because I had lied. I told her that the girl told me to and my memory gets foggy after that. My dad in the car that night told me that there never was any girl and that wasn't the first time I had seen her. The other time I was playing in the front garden and the gate and my dad noticed me talking to myself. He came, he came over and I told him, I'm just talking to this girl. And I remember him being like, okay, that's nice. and not making a deal of it. But again, there was no girl. One time when they weren't looking and I was with her, she touched me for the first time. This is the only time I really thought as a kid that something was strange. She touched my hand and immediately disappeared. I mean, I was five. I didn't know what had happened, but one minute she was there and the next she was gone and I had this incredible need to take off the t-shirt I was wearing. It felt like that feeling when you know there's a spider on you. I ran up to the house and into my room and pulled my clothes off, stomping on them. My mom noticed this too, but I don't remember anything after that. Anyway, the old house, 
The smells of rotten eggs and the birds constantly flying into the windows were creepy enough without all that. It's apparently really sunk in with my dad when he was at the mechanics in town one day, making small talk and one of the lads said, you're brave living in that place. Apparently it had been abandoned for years and had been known locally as a very creepy spot that people would stop and look into on country walks, wondering about it. When we eventually got back to it on our drive, the place was once again abandoned and being used solely for storage by whoever bought it. It still looks creepy today and the gypsies or travellers who bought it have put a big religious shrine in front of the house. Firstly, as most of these stories go, is that I don't really believe in the ghost stuff. I love reading about it as it's fun, but that's it. But here's two instances I can't explain, but I'm sure there is a rational explanation other than ghosts. I have a third, but I could probably explain it as a young schoolboy peer group hysteria. Anyways, event number one. When I was about eight years old, I'm 49 now, I went to the bathroom upstairs just before going to bed. And while I was taking a leak, my mother went into the bedroom to make my bed. She then walked past the bathroom and said goodnight and went downstairs and closed the door all while I was still in the bathroom. I know the door got closed because my granddad had put this wood effect sticky paper on it to, to pretty it up. And the ends at the bottom of the door made a distinct scraping noise against the carpet whenever it was opened or closed. I came out of the bathroom only to still see my mother still making the bed. The sheet appeared to flick over and she remained static, still hunched over the bed, but turned her head from looking straight down at the bed to looking at me very slowly to her left. I knew straight away this person was not my mother and I began to shout for my mother while slowly moving downstairs with my eyes fixated on this person. I could hear her shout back things along, what is it? Or what do you want? What's the matter? I couldn't really tell you what she said, but the voice came from downstairs and that's all I needed to know. This seemed to go on for an eternity as I continued to shout and it felt like my mother would not come to the door unless I looked away from this person. So as my fear grew to a point, enough was enough. I looked away and at that exact second, my mother opened the door and I looked back towards where this apparition was, explaining to my mother as she came upstairs what was wrong, but there was nothing there. What did I think? I was a kid and didn't see my mother that often, so maybe I was tired and something played back in my memory. Event number two. I was around 24 and was living with my then girlfriend at the time, and we stayed in a two bedroom flat, which was shared with her female friend. We had the bedroom with the only bathroom in and the only other room was a lounge kitchen area which if our bedroom door was open you would be able to see straight into. One night I was asleep and had a strange dream which woke me up. I kind of sat up in bed and looked towards the end of the bed where the door was. I felt spooked because the door was open and it was light in there. Well not spooky initially but as my eyes started to focus the room was not our lounge, but appeared to be about 200 years old with furniture suited to the time. Instantly, I rubbed my eyes and my mind started thinking, what the fuck? As I tried to focus again, the room looked darker, but the time had moved on maybe 100 years with different furniture. I kept blinking as I was in disbelief and eventually after rubbing my eyes again and sitting myself upwards to fully wake myself up, all I could see was a dark closed door as I would expect to see. I lay back down trying to make sense of what had just happened, deciding whether to get up and go to the toilet or get a drink when something fell on my left foot. The double bed was against one wall, which my girlfriend at the time slept toward on the left and I was on the right. She loved having lots of cushions and pillows on the bed, so I naturally assumed one had fallen onto my foot, no big deal. But on my left foot, the pressure remained constant and some kind of force pushed my left foot from being pointed upright, 12 o'clock, to flat against the bed, 9 o'clock. This would be impossible for me to move my foot into that position 
as it would hurt, but this force gently pushed until my foot stayed in that position. I didn't feel any pain other than an ice cold sensation moving slowly up my left leg until halfway up my thigh and stopped. This didn't feel normal at all and I looked towards the end of the bed. All I could see was a shadow hunched over my feet and then moved slowly to the right side of me constantly looking over me as it walked alongside me. The only way I can describe the shadow was that it was see-through and appeared to be made up of a moving noise texture. I reached over with my left hand to grab my girlfriend's hand as I couldn't speak and squeezed it. She pulled away so I grabbed it again and squeezed as hard as I could. This hurt her and she sat up turning to her right shouting what? At this point the shadow had moved alongside me level with my head and was already passing into the wall the headboard would have been against. I was then able to sit bolt upright and then she realised something wasn't right. She gave me a hug more for her own comfort than mine but instantly let go because I was ice cold as if I had been in a freezer. We swapped rooms with her flatmates as she wasn't bothered by that sort of thing either but myself and my girlfriend on numerous occasions felt a rubbing in our lower back as if someone was trying to get our attention. Her mother and some friends had come round a few days later and felt a thick horrible atmosphere as soon as they walked in and felt very uncomfortable. What do I think? Lucid dream perhaps? Or her flatmate had come into the bedroom to use the bathroom and I was still asleep or lucid and the two overlapped. A few weeks ago, I, 29 female, was talking to this guy and we were starting to say in each other's places and you know, everything going good. One night, he stayed at my place and went to sleep after a couple of hours. I woke up a few hours after we'd gone to sleep in the middle of the night. I checked the time and it was past 3am. I don't remember the exact time though, but my point is that I felt my bed shaken when I was sleeping. I woke up because I felt movement. I could not explain how I was able to feel the bed shake. I had no clue what had just happened. The shake felt like a soft but still persistent shake, almost as if the bed was levitating from the floor and then proceeded with the shake. The feeling of the bed movement would be gone as soon as I woke up. Also, I have to mention that this is not the first occasion I felt this. Previously in 2016 and 2017, I don't remember exactly the time but it was around then, I'd experienced this more frequently, like two times a week or so for a three or six period of weeks happening to me. I may mention that during that time, I was depressed and very broken and I'm thinking that maybe that have opened some unwanted doors or vibrations. For instance, this most recent occasion, the story I'm writing about, I'm trying to find it's a solution. He's a heavy drinker and works in civil engineering. I understand he might be under pressure. Almost all the time and maybe he, he was low vining. Not understanding what this might be. When I was a kid, my mother, who recently passed away, always told me she was sensitive to paranormal things. She had claimed to see things, hear things, feel things. As a kid and a teenager, I assumed she was full of it. I'm interested in the paranormal, but I've always been a bit of a skeptic and if I'm being honest, it scares me. So I used to say, haha, okay mom, whatever you say. As I've gotten older, I feel like in a way, maybe I'm sensitive to things too. I've never really seen anything per se, but I feel like I sense things and hear things and it makes me incredibly paranoid. I try to f ignore it as much as I can. The past year I've had a few experiences. Loud noises and bangs in my house with no cause. Things moving, sounds of footsteps, feeling like I'm not alone. My husband laughs it off and assumes there is a logical reason for everything and maybe there is. Like I said, I am a skeptic, but for example though, one day I came home and found my flower vase that I keep on the kitchen table 
sitting upright in the kitchen sink. Checked my house and all my doors and windows were locked. My husband was at work, no one was in the house. I convinced myself maybe I had done it and forgot. I can be forgetful sometimes. I came home from work one night, went in the kitchen to grab some food and heard a loud bang directly above me. In our guest room, I mean a loud, unmistakable crash. It sounded to me in that moment like some sort of furniture had fallen over. Maybe the top part of my dresser with the mirror attached had fallen off. Scared the shit out of my cat too. I ran upstairs, find my husband sound asleep in my room. Go in the guest room, nothing fell. I checked the closets and bathrooms, no one there. It didn't even wake my husband. Okay, I'm tired, I'm imagining things. But then why did it scare the cat too? Fast forward to today. I'm sitting in my living room. I've got headphones in, but I hear a shuffling noise. I pause a TikTok I'm watching, take out my headphones and look around. Nothing. The TV is off, my husband is napping. The house is quiet, but it happens again. My cat hears it. She gets up and literally runs to hide behind the couch. I've never seen her hunker down in fear before, but she did just that. She hid and I get up to look around because I still hear the shuffling. It sounds like it's coming from across the room, but nothing is there. My cat eases out from behind the couch and is crouched down, hair sticking out and tail fluffed, and starts slowly creeping over to check it out. It's several minutes later now, but she's still sitting with me, staring at the corner, growling occasionally. I'm starting to feel like I can't ignore this anymore. I'm in therapy and I'm medicated, and my therapist always asks, are you seeing things? Hearing things? But I'm afraid to say yes because he'll think I'm losing it. And what if I am? I work night order to a hotel and about a week ago, I kept hearing clear, distinct voices. For context, it was very late, maybe two or three in the morning. We only have three rooms on the ground floor, as well as the front desk and office area, the dining room, the kitchen, the meeting room, pool, gym, and the laundry room, and the little vending area. I went and checked every room just to see if someone was down there because again, it's the middle of the night. Usually I don't see anyone until at least 5 a.m. apart from the occasional straggler looking for a snack, but there was no one. I checked the whole ground floor, no one. And it sounded like they were right outside the door to the office area. I say, okay, it's late, I'm getting tired and I've definitely watched too many scary videos. It's so quiet down here and I'm easily spooked, so my mind is just playing tricks on me. But what if it's not? There have been so many small things, small occurrences, and I brushed them off. I thought about the possibility of a haunted house, but then how would I hear things at work too? And why would my pets react? So then I consider, would I be experiencing a psychosis? Should I tell my therapist? Or should I call a priest? A lot has happened in the last month. My mom died, I had a miscarriage, and I found out I can't go to school because I'm not eligible for a loan. Maybe it's stress sending me into a bipolar episode. Is any of it real? Am I imagining things? What's worse, it being real and somehow paranormal, or it being a psychotic break? I don't know. Do I tell my therapist and risk being institutionalized or medicated out of my mind? Do I continue to ignore it? I feel like I'm going crazy. This is the only place I know where to talk about it without sounding completely batshit. I should also say I'm bipolar too, and I don't have full-fledged mania. For me, it's always been more depression and anger than anything else, with a little hypomania sprinkled in here and there. I'm an 18 year old male and I live in Italy, in a very small town, population of about 500 or 700, in the middle of the countryside in the Po, Italy's longest river valley. I always was a weird kid and I didn't have any friends. I was also very reckless and I loved doing adrenaline pumping things. 
Back when I was about 12 or 13, I used to sneak out of my home in the late evening. My parents were still out for work and my grandma was too old to control me. And go walking around in the small paths between the fields, just for the scary feeling that gave me being alone in the dark. I know like the back of my hand the zone and I had a pocket knife with me so I felt somewhat safe. One time I went further than the other times and the little earthy trails started becoming small gravelly roads but I continued walking until I saw a crossroad. There were others in the zone, smaller but that thing scared me. Then I saw a man dressed elegantly with a cylinder riding a black horse coming from the left. I've never seen a horse in my town before and I knew for a fact no one rode horses there. The man looked at me then turned his head back toward and stopped near a brick pillar, watched it for a bit, and then I started watching around me to see if there wasn't anybody else. And the horseman was completely vanished, so I ran back home. That night I couldn't sleep because I thought I saw the horseman watching me from my window. I went back to the point where I saw him some other time, but I never saw him again and everything seemed normal. After a couple of weeks, I had a sleep paralysis, not my first and not my last. But that time, there were the same horsemen from the crossroad in my room, watching me, and he was getting closer till I felt the horse breathing on my face, and the smell. I went back to searching the crossroad a week ago, because I remembered the story, but I didn't find anything, just other fields. I hope because someone built over it, and not because it was a dreamlike place.